This week we have fast cars, powerful handguns, and Mr. Bubbles. Welcome to episode 31 of the Fallout 4 Mod Vault. This is the Submersible Powered Armor. You know it's submersible because it even says it on the chest. But even without that telltale clue, you probably could figure it out. This suit of powered armor looks like one of those old deep sea diving suits. It was inspired by the big daddies from the Bioshock series. I mean, let's just be honest, it looks like it belongs in water. This is a very chunky looking powered armor suit and it's actually quite intimidating. There's something about this armor that makes me think of old fashioned sci-fi movies or even horror movies. I, for some reason, I'm thinking a Scooby-Doo monster. It's got a great model and the textures are actually very, very good indeed. This armor is quite rusty as you can see, but the textures are very nice. When you get close up, there are a lot of little details. It functions the same way all of the powered armor does, and you can of course mix and match it with other pieces of powered armor. It can be upgraded and is reasonably tough. There don't seem to be any material mods, so you cannot change the color, but that's okay because honestly this armor looks like it should be this rusty brown. There are some modifications that are unique to this armor. For example, the submersible rebreather for the helmet, which increases the oxygen supply you have when you go underwater. There are tactical buoys for your arms, which will actually increase your carry capacity when you're underwater, and it increases it by quite a lot. I'm not totally sure how much use that would be, but then I've not played Far Harbor, so maybe there are a lot of cases where you go deep, deep underwater and need to loot lots of stuff. And there are even mods for your legs that will increase your movement speed when underwater. And believe it or not, you actually move underwater slightly faster than you move on land in this power armor, which does seem appropriate. However, there is one minor problem with this if you play in third person. There is a nice special effect when the speed boost kicks in, as you can see, that looks like you're rushing through the water, which is great whilst you're running, but when you stop, it carries on, so it doesn't stop, and it looks a little strange, and it can have a bit of a funny effect when you leave. It, it stays on for a second. It's not terrible, but it is a little disconcerting, so if you play in third person, you will probably notice that. There is also an alternative helmet called the Alpha Helmet, and this looks very cool indeed. This is a work in progress because there is a small problem with the headlamp in that it follows the head rather than following the, well, what is the torso? Let's face it, the head in this powered armor does not move, the body does. So there's some small issue there and the mod author is trying to fix it. But even in its current state, this is a superb suit of powered armor. I really like the model, the textures, and just the whole look and feel of this one. It just really works. And no, I did not just give you license to meme. This is the Colt Python, the revolver used by Nick Grimes in The Walking Dead, one of my favorite TV series. This thing actually gives the 44 a run for its money, both in look and feel and in sheer damage and stopping power. I believe it uses a custom sound and it really is quite different to the sound of the 44. If you listen to the Colt and now listen to the 44. It sounds a lot sharper. It's got a, a lot more of a crack to it. I, I really do like the way this thing sounds. The base stats for this weapon are impressive. The damage is only a few points below the 44 and the range is identical. The accuracy is slightly worse on the Python than the 44, but not by much. 
and of course you get the advantage of it using the 38 rounds which are far more common and far cheaper. Now you can actually modify this weapon and turn it into a 44 which will do more damage even than the 44 pistol but I do not recommend doing that. Instead, I would recommend using the hardened, powerful, or advanced receiver because you will continue to use the 38 rounds and you will do considerably more damage than if you change this weapon to be a 44 caliber. In fact, if you change it to the advanced receiver, and I'll show you the 44 with an advanced receiver, they are again fairly well matched. The Python does about 78 damage. There you go, 78, and Kellogg's pistol is doing 84. That is not that big a difference. There are four barrels, short, long, snub-nosed, and standard, but there is only one grip, the standard grip. You can fit a short scope if you like, but that is it. I really do like this weapon. I'm a big fan of revolvers, as quite a few of you know, and as a fan of The Walking Dead, I was bound to love this mod. The only thing I need now is a mod that lets me hold this revolver the way Nick Grimes does. This is the Remington 1858, and it is the sort of weapon that my character Jack from Fallout New Vegas would have adored. This is not simply a device for making holes in objects at a distance. It is also a thing of beauty. And just in case you're not quite getting the message, I love this weapon. It looks great. It sounds great. And it packs a serious punch. This is actually a monster of a weapon. It uses 44 ammo, but it does about 25% more damage than the standard 44. Even when both weapons have the advanced receiver, the Remington 1858 does approximately 20% more damage than Kellogg's pistol. There are less options to modify the weapon. You have the receivers, and you have only two barrels, a standard barrel and the pocket barrel, which is very cool. Does look like you could hide it under your jacket a little easier. You have no options though for grips or sights. But then to be honest with you, I don't think you should. This weapon is not the sort of weapon that you should have glow sights on or a scope. This is one of those cases of less is more. In fact, the only thing I really would like with this weapon is a new animation. For some reason, the two-handed grip looks wrong. I know it would be the best way to shoot the weapon, but for some reason, I just think this weapon needs a gunslinger animation. Do you ever get sick of having to do everything yourself? I mean, you single-handedly save the Commonwealth, and of course, you have to rebuild every settlement. They won't do anything. They won't pick up any of the junk. They won't build a single chair. You have to do it. But worse than that, the materials you use to build these great settlements for them, you have to go out and get. You have to go scouring the wasteland for pencils and toilet plungers. You've set up great supply routes. You've built amazing traders and market stalls, and these guys can't even get some basic resources? Well, with a mod called Workshop Vendor Shipments, you can have your traders get shipments of resources for you. It does require the top tier trader. Excuse me. The tier three. But if you do have such a trader, a you will Ready? now get shipments of, well, pretty much everything. You still have to pay for all of these resources, and because it requires the third tier trader stall, you will need cap collector rank two and local leader rank two, which means you need six charisma. But that seems perfectly reasonable. The trader that sells food and drink also now sells raw meat if you want to make your own food, although I did notice he also sold synthetic gorilla meat. I'm not completely sure where my traders will be getting that from. 
and I will just point out that when you first install the mod, if you check the vendor, they will almost certainly not have any of these shipments. You need to wait until they restock. This mod really just makes sense to me. It feels right. It feels like this is how it should have been to start with. I've set up the supply lines. I've built all of these trade posts. I should be able to get shipments delivered to my settlement without having to run around the wasteland myself. A while ago, I covered a mod called Immersive Fast Travel that allowed you to build things in your settlement that would let you basically fast travel from one settlement to another. There were teleporters, vertebrates, and there were even things like motorbikes and cars. But now there is a mod that allows you to do something similar, but with a key difference. This mod gives you a car called the Highwayman, and this car belongs to you, not to a settlement, but to you. You can find the car close to the Red Rocket on the road towards Sanctuary. However, it's not exactly drivable when you first find it. But don't worry, all you need to fix this ruined car is an awful lot of components. You're going to need a fusion core, 50 steel, 20 rubber, 10 glass, 4 gears and 4 screws. Unfortunately, you're going to actually need those exact resources. You can't just bring along a lot of um, junk items like desk fans and use those, you will have to break those components down into steel, rubber, glass and so on. However, assuming you have those components on you, simply select repair the car, there will be a brief delay and then you will be greeted with the sight of a nice shiny-ish car. It's kind of shiny. It's a lot shinier than the ruined car anyway. You can now use the car and you will get this menu. You can open the car storage or open the fuel unit. You'll notice you can't drive it anywhere yet. That is because you need fuel. You're going to need to place inside here some nuclear material. Now, unfortunately, it has to be nuclear material, at least as far as I could see because if I try to put things like board games that contain nuclear material, it didn't accept it. So you're going to have to break down all of your junk items into nuclear material and use that. Each piece of nuclear material will allow you to fast travel once. Once fueled up, you can use the car again and this time travel to a variety of destinations. These destinations include Diamond City, Good Neighbor, Vault 81, Cambridge Police Station, CIT, Old North Church and all of the settlements that you have unlocked. If you've opened a workstation there, you will be able to travel there. Well, there are some exceptions. If it's just not possible to drive there, you won't be able to go. But for example, I will go to County Crossing. And there you are. I'm now at County Crossing with my car. And that last bit is kind of important. If you check your map, you will actually see the car marked on it. And if I were to use normal fast travel or vertebrate or some other method of travel to get back to Red Rocket, my car would not be there. And that is the key difference between this mod and the immersive fast travel you bring the car with you. This has some advantages and some disadvantages. The disadvantage is if you're not using the normal fast travel, for example, if you're playing survival mode, you will have to come back to your car to fast travel anywhere. If I now ran off to the castle or ran off for quite some time, I wouldn't be able to head to the nearest settlement and fast travel from there. I would have to come back to my car. So obviously that's a little bit of a disadvantage. But the advantage is you can store stuff in your car. You can pretty much load as many items as you would like into the boot of your car, including weapons, armor, ammo, drugs, junk, pretty much anything. This is going to be very, very useful on survival mode. Sure, you can, you know, share junk between your settlements, but not ammo and not weapons. For example, at the moment, I keep the majority of my weapons at the castle. And anytime I want to change weapons, I have to travel all the way back there. With this mod, I would be able to store quite a lot of the weapons I might want to use in my car 
and the ammo that goes along with it, because remember, in survival mode, ammo now weighs something, and all I would have to do is return to wherever I left my car. This is, of course, going to change the way I play. The car will become a kind of mobile base, a place I will store ammo and my favorite weapons, and something I will never stray too far from. If I want to travel from one settlement to the next, I will probably use my car. The mod author has said he would like to make some improvements to this mod, including custom paint jobs and different activation points on the car for different functions. So the travel function would be a different place to the trunk area, for example. Now, obviously, Fallout 2 fans are going to be getting a big nostalgia vibe from this mod. But honestly, if you're looking for an immersive way to travel around the Commonwealth, and still have easy access to things like ammo and certain weapons, this is a great option. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all we have time for this week. I will, of course, be ending with screenshots that you guys have been posting on my Nexus page. A big thank you to everybody who has contributed so far. If you would like to add an image for me to use in one of my videos, I will leave a link to another video down below. If you click on that, it will show you exactly how you can do that. And let me thank you in advance for doing so. I'll be back next week with more great mods to share with you, and I would love it if you could join me for that. I look forward to seeing you there. And until then, remember as always, have fun. If you're curious as to whether I've covered a mod in one of my videos, feel free to go along to my website, gophersvids.com, and check the search functionality out. Just type the name of the mod you're interested in, open up the settings, and filter by mods only. Click for search, and you will see whether or not I've covered that mod. Click on the mod, and it will also show you any of the videos this mod appears in.